Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Johnny Vlogs. Nice to see you here again. Before we get started, this episode brought to you by new Patreon supporter, David Lester. Thank you so much, David, truly appreciate it. I also wanna give a quick shout out to this name that I love saying, I'm so happy I get to say it again, Slurpy Dregs. Slurpy Dregs increased their Patreon donation. Thank you so much, truly, truly appreciated. And of course, you all, all you Patreon supporters out there know I appreciate each and every one of you. It is a very big part of what is able to keep me here doing this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk about a topic that I've kind of been kicking around in my head uh, a little bit. I didn't quite know how to approach it, but it came up again um, when I did the searchlight last week on Maricela Garcia. And that is... I wanted to try to address um, the urgency from the police in responding to something like that. And to do that, I had to try to understand more of what the problem was there. And as I see it, uh, there seems to be two main factors that are kind of a problem with getting this resolved. Um, the first of those factors is that the vast majority of people that go missing uh, are actually found within a less than 72 hour period. And depending on where you look at the stats, it's somewhere between 70 and 90% of those cases are literally solved within three days of the person going missing. So um, if you think about that, you are literally thinking of thousands and thousands of cases where uh, if you want the police to respond immediately and try to act like there's foul play involved with all of them, that would be a significant amount of resources um, for what ultimately might be uh, not a big change in terms of helping to find those people. Uh, and another thing I kept, I kept bumping into when I was looking into this topic is apparently the amount of missing persons cases that are identified to have some element of foul play is relatively small. There's now, I have a little bit of a problem with um, that assumption because there is a number of cases that don't quite get solved. So how do you know if there's foul play or not involved with those cases as well? I don't think it's quite conclusive, but it's probably less than a lot of us think that actually involve foul play. And of course, that brings us to the second point. Why is all of that? Because going missing is not illegal. Uh, jumping over to the LAPD's website, let's just get um, their word on it here. Being a voluntary missing person is not a crime. Any adult person can simply walk away and choose to ignore family, friends, associates, and employers. Since this type of behavior is not criminal, law enforcement is limited on how they conduct these types of investigations. When facts and circumstances indicate a strong possibility of foul play, or the disappearance is the result of a criminal act, the investigation will continue along such a course. Now that last piece, once again, um, it's weird. Sometimes I read language like this and I'm like, when is that going to apply? Uh, the disappearance is the result of a criminal act. I suppose if someone saw someone being abducted, then you could categorize it as that. Um, I don't know that that happens a whole lot, um, at least with the missing person cases that I review, that does not seem to be uh, a very common theme that happens in them. Uh, a very common theme is that the person is not seen by any people and just mysteriously vanishes. Um, so the other twist in this is um, they're saying that, yeah, that type of behavior is not criminal, so law force is limited on how they conduct these types of investigations. What if the person had outstanding debts? What if they had a credit card they owed on or car payments that they owed or something along those lines? Couldn't that line be moved a little bit towards, hey, this is possibly a criminal act of them trying to disappear or trying to run away from these things? Uh, I looked into it a little bit and basically the big message that I got from the websites I ran into was, uh, if you're trying to run away from your debt, don't. Uh, basically, debts and debtors, they know systems that these amounts are going to grow on their own, even if you try to run away from them, and they could literally double, triple, or worse within only a matter of a few years. Um, but 
in terms of trying to draw the police's attention and trying to get them to respond uh, a bit differently if you have a loved one that goes missing it just i don't know i'm trying to look for mechanisms is there some way that you could say hey uh, we know that they owe on this car we know that they have this monthly payment they didn't make it they didn't make it last month um, is that nudging this towards there is now some type of criminal activity i know it's a really weird way of thinking about it um, it actually reminds me of a movie that i reviewed oh i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head um, it was the one I just did an itchy mysteries about it where it was an Oscar award winner, but it was originally on a show called the fifth estate. And it was about a disappearance that happened in the eighties. And one of the things the family actually tried when they were talking to the police was, uh, the fact that he did not own the vehicle that had disappeared with him. And at that point, the cops kind of hit this catch 22 where they were like, well, but if you tell us that he stole the vehicle, then he's not really a missing person. So we can't file him as a missing person. Bizarre. Um, but honestly, uh, I don't know. Outside of that little debt thing, I just can't think of any other outside influence that could kind of tilt it based on this definition into helping people get better attention. Um, and then, of course, there's the thought of why is it it, uh, not illegal to go missing. And what that comes down to is a very uh, simple few words, right to privacy. Ultimately, um, we have the right to privacy in this country. It's one of the things that makes it great. Uh, I bet that there's a lot of you out there right now saying, wait, right to privacy, what are you talking about? Uh, we know what the NSA is tracking. We know with all these agreements that we're signing online that we're uh, very handily handing away that right to privacy. Um, being a missing person might be the last frontier where that's protected. I, I don't know, but that is kind of the core reason for why it is okay to become a missing person. What I wish was that there was some mechanism um, where the police can conduct like an investigation to try to find the missing person and do some type of welfare check with them. I mean, the right to privacy thing is important because in some of these situations, let's imagine that you are in an abusive relationship and you're just going to run away from it. You don't want the abuser to have the information of where you've run away to. So I just wish there was some mechanism like a web form or something where people that have run away from these situations can just send a note to those local authorities and say, yes, I am a voluntary missing person. Um, I don't know if they would have to identify them somehow. They would have to give them some type of, here's how you can identify I'm the person that I say I am, because I can see that system being abused by other people as well. Um, but I just wish there was something along those lines that would, that would really help with that. Uh, apparently here in Minnesota in 2009, uh, Brandon's law went into effect and that was named after Brandon Swanson, uh, which is a case I've covered before as well. And in that instance, uh, it effectively tells the police departments out here that they have to act immediately on missing persons case in, cases, even if it's an adult. Um, from what I understand, that is unique to Minnesota. It is not like that in much of the rest of the country. But just a little note that uh, apparently the state I moved into has a bit of a, a neat feature when it comes to missing people. Maybe some other states should uh, take a look into that as well. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, the right to privacy thing, I get it. But isn't there some way that just a welfare check can be conducted, that some message can ping back to that police department and the police department can then let the family know. Uh, we know that this person is a voluntarily missing person. They left this situation. We don't know why, we have no other information. We can't tell you where they are, but we can close this case out as a voluntary missing person. Do you guys think that's a good idea? I don't know. It's something. It's the only thing I could really come up on this, and I've really been thinking about this one for a while. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me here on Johnny Vlogs today. I hope that you guys never have to deal with this kind of stuff uh, in your personal lives. It is horrible. If you are someone that is considering running away for some reason, just know the people you're leaving behind, they're going to have trouble understanding it. They're going to be stuck in a process of 
not being able to grieve properly. It is a truly terrible thing to do to someone. Admittedly, there might be some situations where some people feel like they have no other choice but to run away, and apparently your right to do so is fairly well protected still currently to do that. But just know that you're, you're leaving a lot of pain behind back there for other people to pick up and deal with. I don't know. Tough stuff, guys. Uh, thank you. I think I already said it, but I'm thanking you again. Thanks for joining me today on Johnny Vlogs. Take care, everyone, and stay safe. I'll see you on the next show on the Lord and Arch channel.